Uh, the Damon Lillard saga is finally over as he was traded on September 27th to the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, the Heat missed out on him and the Bucks were able to capitalize as well as Drew Holiday going to the Boston Celtics. Uh, first, I'm gonna break down the initial Damian Lillard trade to the Bucks, including the Phoenix Suns. And now we're gonna get into the Drew Holiday trade to the Boston Celtics and wait until the end because I have a nice little recap to talk about the next step that the uh, Miami Heat can take in order to improve their roster and to salvage this offseason. Uh, the Portland Trailblades received Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, a rookie that was drafted this past season in the second round, a 2029 first round pick unprotected from the Bucks, and 2028 and 2030 pick swap with the Milwaukee Bucks. And the Phoenix Suns were able to sneak in there to, and, and come out with Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. Uh, first, we have to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks as they got uh, superstar player Damian Lillard, who just came off a season averaging 32 points and 7 assists. Uh, this is a huge offensive upgrade for them as uh, Lillard can space the floor like better than anyone else in the league, arguably the second best shooter behind Steph Curry. He's gonna be the best offensive weapon that Giannis Antetokounmpo has ever played with. I mentioned the pick and roll between those two, um, it's probably gonna be the best play in basketball next season. I mean, you have the shooting ability off uh, pick and rolls, pick and pops of Damon Lillard, overall rolling and finishing ability of Giannis. Uh, that's, again, that's gonna be the most unstoppable move in basketball. But now we have to talk about kind of the downside of the trade for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, even with that said, I still think they got an A for the entire trade, but they did give up a key defensive player in Drew Holiday. Uh, Drew Holiday is an all NBA defensive guy. Um, so they're really gonna miss out on his perimeter defense. And I would probably give Drew Holiday a little bit of an edge on the playmaking, but it's not by much. Um, it doesn't really matter that much on the offensive side. It's really just the defensive capabilities of Drew Holiday. Uh, will be missed in Milwaukee. And as well as trading Drew Holiday, they also let go of Grayson Allen, um, who was a pretty key role for them off the bench. It's sometimes a starter when Chris Middleton was out. Um, he had some pretty big moments in the playoffs in the championship run. Um, he's definitely a great floor spacer. He's probably the best catch and shoot player they had on the team last season. Um, and he also brings a pretty good uh, defensive presence on the perimeter. Uh, Grayson Allen will definitely be missing this Bucks organization. However, again, trading for Damian Lillard, you just can't pass up on that. Uh, now another aspect in the trade was Milwaukee trading away three first round picks. Of uh, the 2029 unprotected, uh, 2028 and 2030 um, pick swaps with the Portland Trailblazers. Now those picks could end up to be very valuable as Damian Lillard will be in his later 30s. Giannis will be in his early mid 30s. And, you know, Brooke Lopez will be gone. Chris Middleton will be gone. That pretty much whole core would be very aged or retired. Um, and if they can't keep building a championship roster around Giannis or if Dame and Giannis both leave, uh, those picks could be very high in the lottery. However, um, when you have a player like Giannis Antetokounmpo on your team, you have to always be looking to put all your chips in the center of the table, maximize your time with a generational player like him, as well as try to win as many championships as you can uh, to keep Giannis happy. Again, those picks might be valuable, but it was absolutely something they needed to do. Next, we have to talk about the Portland Trailblazers. Now, as this trade initially went down, I originally gave them like a B plus, A minus-ish. Um, but however, with the assets they got in Drew Holiday, this makes this an absolute A plus trade for them. They did exceptionally well for the return. And we're gonna get into the Drew Holiday trade in just a moment when we talk about the Celtics. But first, we're gonna stick with the Portland Trailblazers. So the biggest acquisition for them was former number one overall pick, DeAndre Ayton who was traded from the Phoenix Suns in this deal. bacon has been a pretty solid 18 and 10 guy for majority of his career in Phoenix. Um, so he's a pretty good offensive player. He's a big body. You can you know dump it down to him on the post and he's gonna find a way to score. He's also a nice lob threat. However, there are some pretty major concerns surrounding DeAndre Ayton. And uh, first, it's gotta be his interior defense. Um, for the size that he is, um, he should be a above average NBA rim defender, but he is not. Um, mainly it's because that he's just not showing the effort on that side of the ball. If he's not engaged on the offense, he kind of so throws himself a little pity party and he would just um, completely zone out on defense and not really participate. Um, and then also, again, his attitude. Um, if he's not getting the ball all the time, not getting a lot of shot attempts, um, his attitude can quickly kind of dwindle down and it could hurt the rest of the team. But from what I'm seeing from media day, DeAndre Ayton is very excited to be in Portland. Uh, I'm really hoping, you know, best for the guy. And Portland seems like a great situation with any expectations on him. And I can see him having a very good year for them and potentially becoming an all-star the next couple of years as he really you know, anchors down that center position in Portland. Portland also received rookie Camara. He's a 6'8 forward who was drafted in the second round this year. He was kind of just a toss-in for the trade, uh, but he 
you know, if he can really learn how to defend and play a, like the kind of a three and D role, he definitely has the size and the body for it. Um, so maybe he can turn into a valuable role player for you know for the Trailblazers in the future. Oh, now getting into the good stuff. Um, like I said, they got the three first round picks from Milwaukee, all in the back end of this decade, uh, 2030, 2029, and 2028. Like I touched upon for the Bucks, uh, these picks end up being very valuable. And by the time these picks do convey to Portland, um, they would, you know, maybe they've traded them off. Screw Henderson, Shaden Sharp, um, and some of the other young guys that they have are going to be fully in their prime. And if you're, you know, competing for championships while you still have some first round picks, um, that could be lottery picks in your back pocket. Those can be very valuable and you really make your team a championship team very quickly. Um, for right now, they're probably going to hang on to those picks, but if the team becomes good sooner rather than later, you can probably see those picks being traded for, you know, other players to add to this core. And if those picks do um, convey to be, you know, top five, top 10 picks, uh, this makes this trade even sweeter for the Portland Trailblazers. Next, moving on to the Phoenix Suns. Uh, I think Phoenix also gets an A for this trade because they pulled off what seemed to be a disgruntled center who they didn't really want on the team and he didn't really want to be on the team. And they was able to flip him for three very good role players as well as one guy in Keon Johnson who's still young. Uh, maybe he has you know some room to grow. I know in Phoenix, especially on that bench, a lot of guys who didn't get a lot of opportunity are now going to get that opportunity just based off on how weak their bench depth is. So maybe Keon Johnson, one of those guys that steps up and contributes this season for them. Uh, but I'm mainly focused on Grayson Allen, uh, Nasir Little, and Yusuf Nurkic. Also, Nurkic isn't that lockdown center that the Suns have been looking for. I know they stated earlier on this summer that they're looking to trade for a lockdown center. I would not classify Nurkic as that guy. I would say between him and Aiton, they're probably about even on the defensive side of the ball. And not to mention that Nurkic also has a pretty bad injury history um, after he busted his leg like two seasons ago. Uh, it's been hard for him to stay on the court. Uh, however, the one benefit I do like about Yusuf Nurkic is he shoots about 35, 36% from three, only in about two attempts a game. But however, if Phoenix did want to run a five out lineup, you know, with their stars and Nurkic, uh, Nurkic is capable of hitting a three here and there that defenses have to you know be honest and respect his jump shot uh, mix in a Devin Booker Kevin Rett pick and roll that offense could be very very deadly all season next moving on they got Grayson Allen out of this deal and he is one of the better spot up catch and shoot guys in the league he shot about 40 percent from three on about five attempts per game last season not to mention that his defense is pretty average or above average which is better than some of the defenders they have on the team now he's a great addition for this team and then finally uh Nasir Little who um shot pretty well from three last season it was his bet he was his best three-point shooting season shooting about 30 and uh, making about 36 percent of his threes uh, he has great size and versatility to defend so we're going to see, see Nasir Little be a great 3 and D player for this Phoenix Sun team. And this Phoenix team desperately needs guys like Nasir Little. Finally, we're going to talk about uh, the fourth team involved in all the Damian Lillard movement. And that is the Boston Celtics coming in and trading for Drew Holiday. So that trade package uh, consisted of Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, a 2024 Golden State first round pick and 2029 Boston Celtics unprotected first round pick. And the Celtics got Drew Holiday in exchange. So just before I get into the Boston Celtics, that's kind of, I wanna wrap up everything that the Portland Trailblazers have uh, received for the Damon Lillard trade. They got uh, DeAndre Ayton, uh, Kamara, Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, and they got five first round picks. I would say that's a really good deal for Damon Lillard. That's a great package and they have a great foundation moving forward to build a championship winning team. Now for the Boston Celtics, uh, they are my team. So I like the trade, but I don't love it. Obviously we got an upgrade at the point guard position from Mark Smart, from Malcolm Brogdon, from Derek White. Uh, Drew Holiday is an all-star caliber guard who is an all NBA type defender, has a great three point shot, especially on catch and shoots, as well as his playmaking is better than some of the point guards we've had in the past. And he's gonna fill right in um, on this team moving forward to hopefully win and compete for a championship. Now, uh, Drew Holiday came off the bench in their first preseason game for them. Um, you know, they gave Derek White the starting role, so I'm curious on how that's gonna work out for them this season. I, I do see Drew Holiday moving into the starting position for the Celtics team when it gets down to the playoffs. And now getting to the part that I don't like about the trade is trading Robert Williams in this deal. This weakens our front court even more. Uh, Robert Williams was a very serviceable big guy. He did have his injury issues. Even then, we saw him playing 15, 20 minutes a game in the playoffs coming off the bench. He's one of the best shot blockers in the league. Always acts as a lob threat off his crazy athleticisms. But however, now that he's gone, the Celtics have to rely on Christoph Porzingis 
and now Horford. Al Horford's 37. Uh, you can't play him maximum minutes all season or he's going to be absolutely gassed. And Kristaps Porzingis has had a long history of health issues, especially in the lower legs. It's only a matter of time before Porzingis misses some games with some sort of foot injury. Horford needs rest and Kristaps is out. We have no other serviceable big man in the lineup. Saw in the preseason game, they ran Jason Tatum at some center position. Uh, I wonder if that's going to be an actual thing they do during the regular season. The sellers got better, so I think they this was a move that they needed to make. However, I wish Robert Williams was not in the package. I would have thrown another first round pick or two. Maybe the contract was the reason why he was in there, but it's definitely gonna be thin in the front court for the Boston Celtics. Probably the best defensive starting five in the entire league, as well as the great offense that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum bring them. This definitely increases their chances of going for a title. Uh, with that said, um, pretty much there's two teams out East now. You have the Boston Celtics and you have the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, they're pretty much going to be a race to the final from what it looks like. And now with that said, I kind of want to go over what the new odds are for the championship. Uh, with that said, the Milwaukee Bucks got better and the Boston Celtics got better. Uh, it's pretty much going to be a race to the final between those two teams if they can stay healthy. Uh, now I want to transition into um, the NBA Finals odds. And I just want to go over it and see what you guys think. Um, so right now the Bucks are sitting at number one at a plus 375, followed by the Celtics at plus 400, Nuggets at plus 500, Phoenix at plus 650, and you have the Lakers at plus 1200. So right now, according to BetGM, uh, it's really a four-team race to the NBA Finals. Uh, now my question to you is, who do you think now who do you think is going to come out of the East? Is it going to be Milwaukee, Boston, or maybe you have a dark horse team like the Knicks, Philly? Or the Miami Heat. But speaking about the Miami Heat, before you go, they missed out on Damian Lillard and Drew Holiday. That's you know obvious at this point. So I kind of want to talk about some moves that they can make to improve their roster this offseason so it's not a total loss. Uh, two, two free agency signings that I think they should take a swing on. Number one uh, is John Wall. Now they might have to pay him a little bit above a minimum because I know Phoenix is in heavy talks with signing him. But if they can get John Wall, I mean, he really doesn't have to provide much offense for them with Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler. He can be another serviceable point guard for them to play back up to Kyle Lowry, give him some good minutes, and run the transition when it's needed. Uh, next, TJ Warren. I know we haven't heard much from him since the bubble, but he is an offensive juggernaut. Uh, he can give you 15, 20 points if he gets you know open looks you know to start the game and we get the ball rolling, I think it can be a good offensive weapon for the Miami Heat. Of course, those two are just swing your free agency guys. You don't want to expect them to bring you much, but it's kind of low risk, kind of high reward um, for only paying them you know, the minimum. Uh, next, I want to talk about a trade that they might be able to pull off. Uh, so recently, Buddy Heald and the Indiana Pacers decided that they wanted to go different ways, something to do with contract extension issues. And I think this is where Miami can swing in and get a very serviceable wing for a pretty cheap price. Buddy Heald, he's one of the best three-point shooters in the league, and he's also turned himself into a pretty decent defender. He's definitely a better uh, defender than some of the guards they have now in Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson. So the trade that I came up with was sending Duncan Robinson to Indiana, as well as a 2024 unprotected first round pick and a 2025 second round pick in exchange for Buddy Hill. A Duncan Robinson is really the only option they can trade. The Indiana Pacers may not love that contract, but this draft pick could turn into be kind of mid first round, uh, depending how Miami Heat plays. We all know Jimmy Butler kind of chills out during the regular season and then picks it up in the playoffs. So if they go in as an eighth, seventh seed again, that pick could lie anywhere between 15 and 20. And getting that you know first round pick for Buddy Heald isn't too bad, especially since Drew Holiday only brought in two first round picks. Indiana Pacers can't really ask for more than one. And then you know the second round pick is just kind of cherry on the top as well. As they're getting Duncan Robinson and in that Indiana Pacers system, where it's gonna be a lot of Tyrese Halliburton kicking out to wings, I think Duncan Robinson can come off the bench, give him a couple three pointers a game, and be a pretty decent offensive player for them. Um, so, those, so those are the moves I think Miami uh, can make. And that pretty much sums up this video. If you have anything you'd like to add and comment down below, your takes on the Bucks, the Celtics, the Heat trades that I mentioned, or even the Phoenix Suns, anything basketball related, make sure to comment down below as well. If you can like and subscribe, much appreciated.